This is Point of View, celebrating a world record-breaking 62 years of quality public affairs programs from the studios of WDEF News 12, Chattanooga. Hello, I'm Maurice Lewis, and welcome to Point of View. Thank you very much for joining us. You hear a lot about what's going on in Chattanooga. Who is doing what? Is it working? That's just part of today's show. Joining me, my co-host, Nori Moss, what an exciting opportunity to talk about what's happening in our wonderful city. We have some great things happening in our city, and we have our uh, wonderful guest that I'd love to introduce. We have Eric Amlanier. He's one of the reporters around Chattanooga. He does a wonderful job of capturing what's happening with the city of Chattanooga. We have a great young man that is here. We have Derek Townsend. He's from Brainerd High School. He's one of our students that's really taking advantage of the opportunities that are being provided in the city of Chattanooga. And we have here assistant principal at Brainerd High School. This is Dr. Charles Mitchell, and he's also representing the Citizen Safety Coalition that's taking place a new group here in Chattanooga to help our youth. So we have a great panel today to discuss what's happening and how we can make Chattanooga better. You're absolutely right and part of what's happening here is that science and technology is catching up here in Chattanooga with crime fighting. That's why Eric Avenier is here. Eric, I know you have a lot of experience on the crime beat here in the courts in Chattanooga. What have you been doing recently and what can you share about the new technology? Well, Maurice, one of the recent things that I did was two weeks ago, went up to Nashville and I uh, took a tour of the TBI crime lab, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation crime lab. Up there, I learned a lot about not only just crime in general, but how they're using technology to help police here in Chattanooga solve some of these crimes, especially some of the gang crimes. When you say uh, technology to help solve the crimes, like ballistics? Mainly computer technology. Um, you can you can say ballistics and things like that. You know, in terms of you know evidence that is found. But but in, let's just say in terms of like some of the gang violence. Okay, uh, there many people may not realize there is a gang database uh, that stores a lot of information about a lot of the gang members that are both here and also in some of the other locations throughout uh, all the state of Tennessee. A lot of that information that is. Uh, uh, basically provided by local police sent to state authorities they upload that information and it, it's just amazing when you find out how, what they are able to learn about certain individuals and even the individuals that they are associated with well Nori I know he's done a, a reporter package why don't we get into your package sure see what you saw and then we'll come back and Nori will take it over with our guest absolutely fabulous a crime scene like this recent one is how the public normally sees how violent gang activity is investigated by Chattanooga police. But 140 miles away in this Tennessee Bureau of Investigation Fusion Center, TBI agents are working behind the scenes to help local police identify gang members through a gang database. Inside of TBI, it's not brand new. We've had it for a couple of years and have been, have been putting it together and growing it. But the newness uh, comes in that now we have different agencies that are able to come and look, not only can input into it, but also can look at it and utilize it. Unlike the sex offender registry or animal abuse registry, which is open to the public, the gang database is off limits to anyone without a security clearance. Even certain police officers who are granted access have to be thoroughly vetted by state authorities. Being placed into the gang database starts with an arrest. Then an officer will fill out a gang verification form while questioning the suspect. That gang verification form will have a number of aspects that you will ask that person or that you'll check about that person. First thing you do is say, hey, are you a gang member? A lot of gang members say, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm part of this, I'm part of that. And you're throwing up gang signs. Gang sign tattoos and gang pictures posted on social media are other criteria for gang verification. If you get enough points built across this system, of questions that are asked, then they can be noted as a verified gang member. All that information collected is then entered into the gang database. The same criteria is also used to verify people who are gang affiliated or have ties to gangs, but not necessarily a full-fledged member. That's what I'm talking about, taking a look at what's happening in the city of Chattanooga, realizing that we have a problem, and then addressing that problem. Thank you, Eric, so much for the information and the insight on what's happening with this database that's being created. The goal is to keep these young people out of the database completely, right? Well, the goal, well, 
we want, obviously we don't want people to end up on the database, but I mean, the reality is there are gang members out there, you know, they're making it known that they're gang members. Mm -hmm. They're putting it on social media. Uh, they're flashing the gang signs. They are uh, spray painting it and things like that. And what they don't realize is that all of that information, mm -hmm. all, of that, all of that becomes data that mm -hmm. gets stored in a computer someplace. So let's just say, for instance, if uh, they commit a crime mm -hmm. here that's gang related, they go maybe to Memphis or to Knoxville, you know, if let's just say the crime they commit in those locations, it just happens to be gang related. Well, now they can look through that, they can look at that database and be like, oh, okay, well, we now have linked you to another crime that mm -hmm. was gang related in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. So that's how they're using that database. But there is so much more that's going on in terms of safety, and our educators are a principal part of that. And a vice principal is a perfect person to talk that's to. That's right. Yes, Dr. Sir. Charles Mitchell, yes, talk sir. a little bit about what are you guys doing? What are you tasked to do? Uh, basically, Mayor Burt has tasked me and um, Pastor Adams of Olivet Baptist Church to lead this safety coalition. And uh, right now, we're in the, we're taking baby steps. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get the community involved. Uh, you can go to uh, Chattanooga slash <coughs> excuse me Chattanooga slash uh, dot gov mentor if you would like to get in our mentoring program or Chattanooga slash dot gov. Um, well, what's entailed with being a mentor? So oh, mentor. Let me, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm taking right. too many steps ahead. Uh, mentoring, right. uh, I've been working with the United Way uh, and other people in our community for the last year and a half. And what we're doing is that we're trying to get mentors in our schools, in our cities. Uh, we know that gangs, like you said, are a big problem. But at the end of the day, if you don't give students vision when they're young and uh, in the middle school years and in the high school years, uh, they, you know, they cannot be successful later on in life. So that is one of the things we're doing with the mentor initiative. So you can go to chattanooga.gov slash mentor mm -hmm. uh, to, to do that there for that initiative. But the safety coalition is, is an initial phase of uh, coming off the ground. It's really important that we understand that there are a lot of people who have become successful from Chattanooga that come from these at-risk neighborhoods, from these neighborhoods that are you know, underprivileged. Um, I come from East Chattanooga. You also come from East Chattanooga. And we all have our backgrounds and our stories. What was that turning point for you? What made you realize you had to do something different and you didn't follow what a lot of other people were doing that were in trouble? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Nori, what, what was the turning point for me? I used to run around with the gangs. Um, <clears throat> I did a lot of bad things I shouldn't have done when I was uh, growing up. But what was the turning point for me was Julian Kaufman. He's at the Baylor School. He's a coach, but he was a mentor for me, and uh, he kind of showed me that the, the, the things I was doing in East Chattanooga and Glass Street, living out there, being involved with gangs and doing some of the negative things I was doing, he showed me another path. So that's why we want to get mentors involved to show kids that there's, before we get to the CSI and the crime labs and things of that nature, we want to be preventative and measured. Well, Derek Thompson, right. you're a perfect example of what we're talking about. You're one of the young people that the attention is being focused on, but you also have a responsibility toward those who are younger than you. What are you doing? At my school, since I'm on the leadership team, I myself can mentor others who are misguided. So by being that, I set an example that that's, that's not what you have to be. You don't have to do that. You could be yourself, and yourself is a person who is... I want to ask you a question. For a lot of your peers that you talk to, you all talk openly and honestly with each other. What's the conversation like? Well, my friends, well, since I'm on the leadership team, I encourage my friends to either join or hang around with me and do leadership things. So most of our conversations aren't really derogatory, I would say. As she can say, Ms. Nora, I, I, I met her the other day. I was with book club. Yeah, I, I wanna, and I want to highlight this, uh, that Mr. Townsend is a remarkable youth. And I don't think we show enough uh, highlights of the youth that are doing wonderful things in our city and I just want to commend you he's reading a lot of books and literally taking himself into a, a higher I would say atmosphere stratosphere of what you can accomplish because you've opened up your mind to really take in your education and utilize your ed education what do you want to be with when you grow up I want to be a lawyer and you can do that. You can absolutely be a lawyer. And I mean, and, and it, it starts now. And I think it's important. And, and I love what we have Dr. Mitchell that's doing. It's he's taking these young people. He's mentoring these young people within Burnett High School, one of the schools that gets a really bad rap around the city. But there are some wonderful youth doing great things. We have Derek Townsend here to prove that. We have some other youth that are going to be on the show that can showcase and highlight that there are wonderful things that are happening in this city. So if you could say anything to the youth 
about the violence, about what's happening, about cease and fire, what would you say to them? You don't have to be the status quo. Well, if you're going to be a lawyer, you need to learn the language. <laughs> Here's part of the language. I know you think you heard what I said, but what you heard me say was not what I meant. Now, could you do that as an attorney? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things, too, that, you know, it's not so much as just staying out of the gangs, but even knowing who you're associated with, mm -hmm. too. Because one thing about that, uh, the gang database that, we, that also came up is that there are people that are not necessarily in a gang, mm -hmm. but they're associated with people that are in a gangs. And guess what? Their information is on there. So, you know, a lot of times there's, you, you've heard that term guilt by association. And, you, and that's one thing, you know, you, you definitely have to be aware of. Eric, you, you've talked to your colleagues in other cities where there are also problems, mm -hmm. gang problems. Are you guys starting to share information? Actually, we are. While I was in Nashville, I actually met up with a reporter uh, from the CBS Nashville affiliate, and we have decided, we started this little pack that because they have a gang problem in Knoxville. She's out of the Knoxville area, but uh, because they have a gang problem in Knoxville, which now we're, we're learning that some of the Chattanooga gangs are traveling up to Knoxville, that we were going to uh, share information, share video, maybe share sound bites, maybe share whatever lead that we get on certain cases. So. Nori, as you know, gangs recruit. They are organized. Mm -hmm. They Very. have marketing people. They have salespeople. They have tech enforcers. They have the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So this is really a big task that we're facing. I think ultimately that's one of the reasons that we have the Citizen Safety Coalition. That's one of the reasons we have uh, great leadership from Ladarius Price and from uh, Mantra Beasley and from Caritza Mosley. All of these people who come from backgrounds. I'm glad you're mentioning a, a, a broad coalition mm -hmm. because it's just such a big problem. It, one, one institution can't solve it. Absolutely. But I think really attacking that educational component, really making sure that the kids from literally from infant stay uh, from infancy to, uh, to to early childhood that they really understand that they they have to have a safe place to be that we want to make sure that they are learning in these environments and that they're carrying that on and then that they're learning throughout the summer that's why it's really important to make sure that we have programs available for the youth to take advantage of I'm an advocate for youth and family development <laughs> we have wonderful programs that are available mm -hmm. for them to utilize and so we want to make sure we get that information out well as getting much as information possible. out is a big part of this program you mentioned a website earlier. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, share that with us, please. Yes, sir. That website, again, would be uh, go to Chattanooga slash safe, uh, Chattanooga.gov slash safe, and then Chattanooga.gov slash mentor. Those would be the two websites you need to go to. I want to thank all of you for being guests. And by the way, this is Point of View. Uh, you can find us on YouTube anytime you want to now. Yes, you can. Uh, WDEF YouTube. Uh, set your DVR. This is just one segment. We're going to go away for just a little bit. When we come back, uh, the Mayor's Youth Council is also involved in some other things. Stay with us, please. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Only you can prevent wildfires. Join us for Point of View, weekends on News 12 Now and Bounce Chattanooga. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Thank you for staying with us here on Point of View. And don't forget to tell your friends about all the exciting things that we're doing here. Uh, Nori Moss is my guest host, or 
co-host here today. <laughs> Nori, the first segment we talked about some of the exciting things and some of the players, mm -hmm. the things that are happening in Chattanooga. We're going to switch gears now and go in a different direction. How, how do we do that? Well, I'm really excited about the Mayor's Youth Council. We had the inaugural program that took place, and what has happened is we've identified some wonderful, actually, the youth have identified themselves. <laughs> and not me, beautiful, right? Right, let me that, be specific. They've identified right. themselves as leaders, as voices for the youth, and they've applied, they go through a rigorous application process. We want to make sure that this youth that actually want to commit to this, because this is additional to their studies, this is additional to their extracurricular activities, but they've signed up for the Mayor's Youth Council. They have participated in the program, and now it's time to start our second year of the Mayor's Youth Council. So we're ready to roll into this, and we wanted to talk to some youth that participated in the program. So here with us today, we have Carlisha, which is, she's amazing. <laughs> Carlisha McKenzie. <laughs> Look at that smile, would you? I mean, <laughs> she, she's a beautiful person, beautiful spirit. Absolutely. And then we also have Jadarius Cameron, and he is also <laughs> one of my favorite people in the Mayor's Youth Council. They really light up the room, and they've uh, really went through this process, and I think really got a lot out of the process. So. Tell us a little bit about each of you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what school you go to, the grade you're in, and then tell us how you were introduced to the Mayor's Youth Council. I am Carlisha McKenzie. I am a junior at the Chattanooga Girls Leadership Academy. I was introduced to the Mayor's Youth Council through Tyler Yant and Michael Baskin. They came to my school through design sessions and they said that the Mayor's Youth Council is a council for um, young people and that would like to have a voice in the city and I was all for it so I signed up. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Jadarius? All right. As you said, my name is Jadarius Cameron and I am a senior at Chattanooga School for the Arts and Sciences and how I got involved was basically that I <laughs> was basically I went to one of the design sessions for the Mayor's Youth Council and I kind of got that feeling of as we were creating this council and I feel like that this was something that I needed to be a part of. Mm -hmm. So after doing the designing, I just said I had to apply when the applications came out. Well, let me talk to you about what's the conversation like when you talk to your friends and you tell them what you are doing. How do they initially react and respond to you because you didn't have as much time to hang out with them as maybe you did before. Now you've got another purpose. Talk about that experience. Well, at first they thought it was going to be politically. Um, they thought it was going to be all based on um, topics that have to do with the government, um, st things of that nature. But when you broke it down to each individual, it's not those types of aspects. They were all for it. Okay. Now, as far as the youth having a voice within the city of Chattanooga and being able to do projects that you wanted to do, talk to us about the process and how you selected different projects that you participated in and what did you accomplish? All right. So, our project selection process, we started off, we started off with many different ideas mm -hmm. and we just decided we can't necessarily tackle on every issue right. regarding youth in the city. So, we decided to select on I think we picked six, six main topics they wanted to focus on to so what we can make an effective difference. We had what, the Women's Council. We talk about getting youth into public spaces and taking mm -hmm. advantage of all the public parks and recreation services that we have. We had voter registration. We also had inactivity for teens. And what do you mean inactivity? Um, getting the people, getting your youth people aware of the causes like heart disease, diabetes, getting them active in the community. So a very strong Physically health component. Active. Right. Okay. Well, it seems like you guys had an opportunity to really discuss what was important to you guys. So no, no adult came in the room and said, this is what you have to talk about because this is what adults want to know about kids. You actually selected the topics that you wanted to talk mm -hmm. about and tackle, and you did that within the Mayor's Youth Council space. Is that correct? Right. right. Awesome. <laughs> uh, one of the things um, that I would like to ask you is, what would you say to other people who are interested in being a part of the Mayor's Youth Council? And uh, another component is, you know, for those kids who are like, no, this isn't for me, why should it be for them? I would say. <laughs> well, um, for people who want to get involved with the Mayor's Youth Council, I think number one is an excellent opportunity. You're able to meet other youth in the city, around the city, from different schools, different backgrounds. That you may not otherwise meet, correct? Exactly. Right. Okay. Because we, 
the youth council is represented by people from all over Hamilton County, from people from Tyner High School, Brainerd High School, Signal Mountain, Uruwa. Mm -hmm. We it's just one of those places where you might not normally get to meet these people. How do you feel about that experience? I think that's very important because you're you're meeting peers your own age from different parts of this area. How's that experience been? It was one of those where being from my school, my school is a pretty small school, it's public school. So at first I only knew the people from my school and from my neighborhood community. Is your school mostly black? No, we a uh, very diverse school. Okay. What school do you attend? Uh, CSS. Okay. And CSS yeah. stands for. Come on, you know. Chattanooga School for the Arts and Science. Let's hear for <laughs> Let's hear for the Arts and Science. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. So, but being involved with the youth council, you were able to get meet people from different backgrounds, and you were able to get people ideas from people from different perspectives. So instead of always being immersed in one environment, you're getting that perceptives from many different point of views. Were you nervous at first because, you know, personalities and you don't know should you be the outspoken person, should you be a little more reserved, should you go hard for what you're passionate about? How was that? How was how were your ideas received within the the group? Well, um, at first I was very shy. I didn't know because there were many people from many different backgrounds, so you didn't know how they would react to certain things that you would say. But as time grew on, I was realized that you know what, the youth council is so that youth can have a voice and mm -hmm. I'm not having, it's one thing to have a voice but not using it. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I need to step up, I need to speak more and create my ideas. And I believe that once I did that and many other people did that, we were able to create a more effective council. What has happened to your self-confidence since you got involved in this program? I believe that my self-confidence, for one, I believe I'm more comfortable speaking in public. I'm more comfortable speaking in big groups, two big groups of people. So the Mayor's Youth Council helps me boost my confidence with public speaking. Nice, nice. <laughs> Jadari, same question. I mean, my self-confidence, I believe at first that I was a self-confident person, but I realized that when I get into different environments, I tend to be more quiet. Mm -hmm. But I mean, being a part of the council has that wasn't just necessary. It wasn't allowed, basically. You had to be able to talk to other people and meet with many different people from many backgrounds. Do you guys see yourselves as role models? And I know this is an important question mm -hmm. that you guys deal with all the time. It is. Absolutely. <laughs> How? Good. Why? I believe that we, the Mayor's Youth Council, is a role model for the youth because it is giving youth the opportunity to be a part of something that's happening in their city. Something if you want to be the if you want to see change, you need to be the change, and Mayor's Youth Council does that for you. Right, because I mean I believe that I would consider myself as a role model. However, I don't believe that I'm better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Like I'm above anyone else, any of the other youth. Because, I mean, coming up, anyone can get involved in the Mayor's Youth Program. We're having our applications open up right now. Talk a little bit more about Nori. Yes. The app application process. Talk to us about the application process. I got a chance to uh, see the breakout sessions, the design sessions that you all mentioned earlier. Talk about how the application process is going to be a little bit different now because the program has actually taken place. It's happened. You've participated. <laughs> what have you learned that you want to make better for those that are uh, interested in being a part of the Mayor's Youth Council? Well, you first of all, you can sign up for Mayor's Youth Council at j.mp slash myc.app16. Again, that's j.mp slash myc.app16. <laughs> well, all Congratulations right. on, the, on the good you. passing the memory course on that one. Thank you. Um, you know, I'll, I, I do want. I do want to add. You can also go to Chattanooga.gov. Right. Go right. under the mayor's tab, and the mayor's youth mayor, mayor's youth council is right there. You can get that application <laughs> as well. I love that you are with it. You're like, go to this website. Um, but we're we're excited about what's happening. We see a lot of issues within our youth, within the city, but especially with our black youth as role models, as young people who are excelling. You're about to go to college. You're about to go to MTSU. I'm so very proud of you. What, what has been the difference? Has it been your parents? Who's been that, that change in your life? Um, it's the same opportunities that are, over, are available, but what's the difference between you and the youth that doesn't take advantage of these opportunities? Exactly. I think it's all about taking advantage of the opportunities that are given to you. Because the people who say that there just aren't opportunities out there are the people who just aren't looking for the opportunities. Because, I mean, Chattanooga and Hamilton County gives you so many opportunities. You just have to 
go looking and get involved. It's and very, like, very <laughs> typical that young people sometimes fall into the trap of you don't want to stand out from your peers. You don't want to seem like you're different or act like you're a little bit better because you're trying to do something. Mm -hmm. Does that ever come across your mind? Well, I actually like the fact that I'm standing <laughs> up and doing things different from everyone else because that's setting me apart from everyone else. Right. One of the things that uh, politics, you, you guys mentioned voter registration, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, not everybody in the city is fond of spending money on programs like what you guys are involved in. They may say, well, we could spend the money better doing something else. What would you have to say to people who say, spend the money on a bicycle pass or something else as opposed to youth development? We are the future, so you need to invest money in us because we are the future. <laughs> That's right. I love it. Well, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. That public speaking is paying off. You learned in the Mayor's Youth Council. Darius wants to be a communications professional, and he's looking into exploring those options. So being here on the show, we really appreciate you taking out that time and your day and your schedule. We wish you continued success. We are very, very proud of both of you. Thank and you. thank you for being a part of the Mayor's Youth Council and representing the council very well. You, 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 you have like five seconds to give a shout out to the most important person. Who would you give a shout out to? The most important people in my life would no doubt have to be my parents. With that, they made me the person I am today. Okay. I would say my parents, God, and my school. Awesome. Excellent. Well, for next week's show, here's what's happening. When you look around, uh, students in particular and parents, you've been studying for the test. Now all of a sudden in Tennessee, Nori, they're mm -hmm. saying, well, maybe we won't do those tests. Maybe. So <laughs> what's going to happen? What's the outcome? And what do we get prepared for? I'm Maurice Lewis with my co-host, Nori Moss. Stay tuned with us. This is Point of View. Closed captioning provided by the following. Funding for this program is brought to you by Barnett & Company, specializing in tax-efficient strategies for the preservation and distribution of family wealth, offering continuous investment management with a focus on long-term strategies. Areas of service include investment, estate, education, and retirement planning. Barnett & Company the power of compound returns over time. More information can be found on the web at barnettandcompany.com. For 70 years, Smokey Bear has asked you to use fire responsibly. Fire is due to an unattended campfire. Go time. Here's how you can stay on the front lines of preventing wildfires. Always watch your campfire before leaving. Drown it, stir it, drown it again, and feel that the fire is out cold. Oh. Bullseye! And you won't need a visit from these guys. Copy that. You can be Smokey's wingman when enjoying nature and prevent wildfires. Visit SmokeyBear.com for more fire prevention tips. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire, and that could be scary. Only you can prevent wildfires.